top of the morning to you. And the rest of the day to yourself. Thank you. Well, as you can guess, happy St. Patty's Day, everybody. Moosey and I have done a nice little bit on our patio for you, but no cooking this time. It's just talking about some great nostalgia and memories of St. Patrick's Days in the past. photographed me outside by the rock wall with my cape and I always enjoy wearing the cape on that one day a year and I explained how I made it the kinds of fabrics that I used and for those of you who love to sew maybe you could make a cape like this hey. happy St. Patty's Day top As of the morning to you and the rest of the day to yourself oh thank you do I look <laughs> silly here my name is Black Demar, I'm the leader of the band. Although we're up the pop pop pop. Oh, you should have gotten the words to that one. Uh, <laughs> is it good? <laughs> what do you have in there? Jameson? Irish whiskey, yeah. Well, <laughs> we decided to say hi from a half cleaned up patio. We still don't have the top on and there's a lot of stuff over there I haven't cleaned up yet but it's a glorious day it's a grand and uh, it's a grand old day we decided to be out here now I was gonna make some coal cannon and I still might um, possibly some Irish bread but we've had so many things going this week that we're not doing it oh good gosh those hats are old aren't they I bought these for everybody, all the boys in the family. How many years ago? I don't know, but they were 70 bucks each. I remember that. Yeah. And it was, uh, had to be 30 years ago. Yeah, most of, most of the guys have those. Well, my outfit, and um, we just saw Colleen and Micah, they're taking the dog for a walk. And Colleen is gonna film me in my cape. You know, this is the only day of the year these days that I get to wear my my Irish regalia here. I had the kilt made in Scotland in 1969, believe it or not, when we were living over there. And I have the, the plate, the whole bit, the boys all had kilts and we had, even though we were in Scotland, we had some pretty good Irish days, didn't yep, we? Yeah, we did. A lot of fun. And Moosey's Irish sweaters from there. You know, St. Patrick's Day was always a big deal back when we lived in New York. I know. The huge parade in New York down Fifth Avenue. Oh, I'll I tell you what, we have had some bad St. Patrick's Day. I'll give you an example, two examples. Fort Knox, they don't know from St. Patrick's Day. And Las Vegas, lots oh. of bars are open, but the party that goes down, the parade that goes downtown, it's like three fire trucks and the Knights of Columbus or something, you know, it is nothing. Big oh, nothing. but Colleen, she was going to college there. In fact, that's where she that's met Mike. Because all the bars are overflowing. Well, that's the point. She waited for St. Patrick's Day all year long. It was a huge thing in, in Vegas. In fact, I think they televised it and everything, didn't they? <sighs> I believe so. But getting back to New York, I marched in the St. Patrick's Day Parade my senior year in college. I marched in cap and gown and high heels, believe it or not. Five, up mil five miles. Five miles up, <laughs> up Fifth Avenue in high heels. And a white gloves too, by the way. So, but some great St. Patty's Days. For years and years, we used to have a great big St. Patrick's Day party yeah at the house and the kids loved that. that that's out here no we used to have it in hidden canyon yeah hidden canyon not in scotland but well, getting back to new york all the years i lived there i have never seen the saint patrick's day parade watched it on television when i was a kid then when i was in high school we used to get on the bus and go over Three or four guys all set to go to the parade, and we get off the bus, 
at 8th Avenue and the parade was on 5th. And we say, okay, let's go up 8th. Oh, wait a minute, is that a bar? It looks nice. They'll serve us. And we're like 17. Go ahead and have a couple of beers and go out and go to the next one. Oh, whoa, whoa, look at this one. Well, we never made it to 5th Avenue. Watch it on television. Oh, the drinking stories from uh, the guys, no. right? If I'd we ran rather, out of money, we'd sing Danny Boy and give rather, us a buck. No, I'd rather start talking about the dancing, the Irish dancing and the jigs and the and all the fun. Um, we've had a couple of granddaughters that have taken, in fact, little Megan still takes lessons, Irish dancing. Shannon, of course, was a champion Irish dancer until she blew out her ankle. She was about ready to go to Ireland for world, they call. But I, St. Patty's Day is a big day here in uh, the United States. And I have done videos, or we have done videos in the past. I think we've done three or four of them. If you want to go back each year and watch them. The first year we sat in the kitchen and we made a full on Irish dinner. We did the Irish stew, we, and we actually made all this in the kitchen, Moosey and I together, in these outfits. And the next year, I believe we did a full Irish breakfast, and there's a place down here in uh, Fullerton that sells a lot of the British goodies, and they sell the Irish sausages and the bangers, and we went down there, made a trip, and then cooked that up. But I don't think I'm gonna do a big cook this year. If I do get one in, it will probably be cold cannon, which is leftover mashed potatoes from your big Irish St. Patty's Day party. And you mix it in with some cabbage. What else? Butter. And a, a little, little bit leftover of corned beef. Yeah. Now I did cook a, a, a slab of corned beef yesterday. I boiled it for about three hours. And I gave Moosey a corned beef sandwich last night with coleslaw. How was it? It was good, but I have to tell you something. You, you think of Irish meals and you think of corned beef and cabbage. No, no, no. <laughs> Back in the fa famine days, 1840 to 1852, a typical meal there before the famine was 10 pounds of potatoes a day per person and a, maybe a lick of bacon on Sunday. But there was no corned beef. No, that's funny. It's I the, look, I tell you where the corned beef came from? When the guys left, the people left, two million people left. They came to New York and they got work on the railroad. And so they went on the train, work train, out to where the, they were working, you know, in the middle of Midwest. And they put guys on there and didn't bring them back for six months. So while they were out there, they got corned beef, which was in big barrels with salt in it. That's right, you could preserve it, huh? And preserved, and they had loved it because they had never had meat like that. Yeah. And potatoes, which they keep, and cabbage, which keeps. And they got that every day for months and after months. Yeah. And they, and they associate Irish with corned beef and cabbage, it ain't. No, we always had, and we had a lot of big parties here up at Colleen's. We had a big white tent. Oh, we must have had a hundred people. And Margie's husband, Mike, had a band. And for every year, Mike's band would play. And we danced. We had so much fun. But we always served corned beef, cabbage, lots of potatoes. And we had a few Irish friends from Ireland, and they said, Gee, we never had the corned beef then, so it's an American dish. My moosey is getting tired sitting on the wall here, so he's decided to sing a song, and I think we're both going to accompany him with some of our chimes here. Let me show the chimes. Aren't they? These have been hanging for years and years here. So, I hope it's an Irish song. Well, I, I, I thought everybody at the weddings and didn't go to any funerals. St. Patrick's Day, they'd get me up there and give me the microphone. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are cold. My moosey is getting tired sitting on the wall here, so he's decided to sing a song, and I think we're both going to accompany him with some of our chimes here. Let me show the chimes. Aren't they? These have been hanging for years and years here. So, I hope it's an Irish song. Well, I, I, I thought... Everybody at the weddings and 
didn't go to any funerals. St. Patrick's Day, they'd get me up there, you know, half crocked, and they'd give me the microphone. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are cold. From glen to glen, and down the mountainside. Once I did, I think about five years ago, I wore it to some winter function. However, I am so excited to show you this. Now, I had my kilt made in Scotland when we lived over there in 1969. And it was made by a kilt maker. And I have the plate. I even have the um, Irish pins. Yes, you and do. I'm not going to show you over here, but since I'm not 117 pounds anymore, <laughs> you can you can move out, Colleen. Okay. <laughs> I have kind of it doesn't overlap anymore, but I can still wear it. Now the cape, there are six yards of tartan. Let me show you the inside. This is wool. Here. Yeah, it says full circle cape, and there's six yards of see the whole thing? tartan on the inside. And the tartan is from fabric that I bought in Scotland and made drapes. And I hung these drapes in three different houses since then. And then I made a cape out of it and it matches my kilt. How many yards? Uh... Six yards of tartan and six yards of black wool. Wow. I found the, um, it's a beautiful chevron heavy wool pattern. Mm -hmm. And I've made 14 of these capes all with different tartans and i'll put the picture of all the girls we made them mine is a burberry yours was a burberry, a burberry tartan yep. yep and i had a red tartan the stewart and i can't the gore well this is the, the pink for one of the little girls yep I, I, well i made them because we took a trip to ireland with i think 33 of us at the time so babies and everything and we went to Ireland, flew over, and spent two weeks at Christmas. And I made these capes for that trip. Now, we went two years after that again. We loved it so much. Yep. We, we found um, a beautiful 1600s, was a former castle. We made that. But anyway. The problem that we all found was that they're actually quite heavy. They are. Traveling with them was, I know. was difficult. But I, I, hope I carried the, mine on. I, I hope all the kids still have them. They're very, very heavy. I even put these frogs on all of them. See the frogs and the Irish buttons? Mm -hmm. aren't, aren't this, yeah. this, is, this is my A sewing. lot of TLC went into them. And they have these, um, the holes here where your arms yeah, go for in. my cape. Now I'm going to yeah. I'm gonna model the cape. So you can go far back and we'll try and... Pray that I don't fall. Don't, don't hurt your shoulder when you I put it on. Because I've got my boots on. See? Ooh, I yes. The knee's okay. Oh, oh. I'm, I'm on a hillside. So. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to swing the cape out. Oh, geez, And try Mom. and put it on. Oh, jeez. I know. <laughs> Hang on, everybody. <laughs> Let's see if I can do this. Don't okay. hurt your shoulder. Ready? Oh. Whoa. <laughs> No, I did it the wrong way, wrong hand. We'll, we'll do this over again. Here. Okay, ready? Okay. Okay, drum roll. Drum roll. Brrr. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it's so Isn't this gorgeous? pretty. Yeah. Isn't this? Oh, I love this. Yeah. I, I wish I could wear it more, but oh, it's, see how it matches. God, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, and the hoods actually look really pretty when they're on, too, because yeah, you see do. the tartan they on the inside. Really it's actually warm today, isn't it? It's a beautiful day. I wish we were having a big party like we used to. I but know. We have our memories of those great parties, don't we? Oh, gosh, we sure do. So, Wow, isn't it all beautiful when it's all together? Isn't it? And yeah. the pins on my hat, too. And um, the cross from, I think Dubby brought this in Ireland for me. So I'm all decked out. Woo! Look great, Mom. Woo! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Oh, hi Sarah. Yes. Can I do, can I okay. do my twirl? Do, do your twirl. <laughs> Wee! I don't look as good as you 
do, but... <laughs> you look cute enough, that's for sure. <laughs> you, she's all excited because she had such a nice walk, huh? Did she have a doggy uh, bath? No, she, but well, it's been a very busy morning. It's Wednesday, and we started off with a, a visit to Moosey's cardiologist, his six-month checkup, and <laughs> we wound up at 10 o'clock this morning waiting for the doctor. They put us in one of those rooms, and we, we were singing and harmonizing the whole time. I think everybody might have heard us, but... It was our way of passing the time. Then we went to Jack's, which is a drive through and we had a nice car lunch. We had fish sandwiches, and guess what? A fish, nice big thick fish sandwich with coleslaw and tartar sauce combo with a drink and with a drink and also fries was half what a hamburger or or a chicken sandwich would be. Talk about <laughs> the cost of living. I believe that drive throughs have gone up immensely. I'm gonna put my seatbelt on before we get out on the road. Thank you, ladies. I always do eventually put it on, almost right away but I was bad the last time, but it does go on before I reach a main road. And then we went to the eye doctor. I had had a call yesterday that my new eyeglasses were in and I needed to have a little fitting today. So we sat in front of the optometrist waiting for um, GB, our friend, to come home from his lunch and we finished our lunch had a great lunch and these are my new glasses do you like them now they are the transitional so I'm outside and um, they're a little bit bigger than my other ones they're the same style in the same color only a little browner with tan and they're incline frames and I'm really pleased with them so I can see great too so I'm wearing my new glasses and now I just dropped Moosey home and I'm off to finally get that dirt. He also wants some zinnias and marigolds, and I have to do a little shopping. I did tell you that Easter week, which will be the week after Easter, Margie and Colleen and I, and possibly Debbie, if she can spare a couple of hours, will be making three different kinds of bread in Colleen's kitchen. And that is going to be fun. As you know, Margie's our bread maker and she has been experimenting with just about every kind of a bread that you can imagine. She made pizza dough bread, which was out of this world. She's made focaccio, she's made brown bread and um, she's working on sourdough right now. So, We'll see what we make, but that's gonna be a fun, fun video. So we'll be doing that the week after Easter because that's when Margie's off from school and hopefully Colleen can grab a couple of hours. She's a family therapist and her her clients are um, throughout the day. Um, when I got up to the counter, I asked a nice gentleman if he could get someone to get me some potting soil. Well, he got two for me, just like I asked. However, these are twice the size that I thought he was bringing up, but it's okay. I didn't want him to go all the way back. I will have to do it little by little in pails, I think. But I'm glad I have lots of dirt now, so I better get busy. I have my first poppy blooming this morning. <laughs> I was at the nursery. Moosey wanted me to get lots of little marigold plants for color, which I did. And I also got another basil in case my other one goes south on me and another eggplant. This time I got the big American fat eggplant. Last time I had the, I think it was called Ishiban, the Japanese kind. And um, those didn't grow well. Here's some more pretty little marigolds. And I think I also did pick up some mums here, too, for some reason or other. I think they're called calendula. Now, I was going to do some cooking. I have all the, the fix-ins for some Irish soda bread, the sweet kind, with the caraway seeds and the raisins. 
However, I'm going to make that tomorrow. Today is only Friday, and Moosey and I do think we'd like to eat it over the weekend, and I don't want to make the bread too early. I also am going to make coal cannon tomorrow or Sunday for Moosey and I to eat. Last night, I did boil a corned beef for two or three hours, and we had corned beef sandwiches, which is actually in Ireland. They don't eat corned beef, only us here in America. And Moosey tells the story why, when we're sitting outside on the patio, he'll tell you why the Americans started to eat corned beef on St. Patrick's Day. We used to have glorious St. Patrick's Day parties for years and years in our family home where the children and all our friends would come and Margie's husband had a band, we danced. But we had them for years up at Colleen's house in a big tent, but we haven't had them for several years. I think COVID kind of uh, put a kibosh on everything at this point. But we still celebrate and still love St. Patrick's Day. Now, I hope you've enjoyed all this. I've put some pictures of all the cakes. I explained how I made it, the kinds of fabrics that I used. And for those of you who love to sew, maybe you could make a cake. Now. I want to thank you all so much for being a part of our family here, for subscribing, for commenting. Your wonderful comments are so enjoyed. Both Moosey and I enjoy. As a matter of fact, a lot of my daughters and sons read all the comments too, and they love them. Thank you for congratulating us on reaching 50,000 subscribers. Never in my life thought that when we started making these four years ago, not quite, that we'd ever reach this point. So we'll see you sometime during the week. Goodbye, my friends. Have a good, good day. I love you. And meanwhile, have a good weekend. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Enjoy the feast. Whether you're Irish or not, you can still celebrate. I love you all. See you real soon. Goodbye. And God bless us all.